All right, it's now time for us to take a break from coding. We're going to bring in the resident artist, Woo-hoo. Mr. Zachary Parrish. How's it going, Zach? Pretty good. How are you doing, man? You know, not bad. We've been coding for hours and hours <laughs> on end, and it is now time for Logan and I to take a break for a few minutes. Well, I don't even get to use the recording studio anymore. You guys are always in here recording X and A. It honestly feels that way. Yeah. <laughs> but, hey, X and A is turning out to be one of the most incredible courses we've ever offered at 3D Buzz. And to make it even more incredible, here we are with yet another game where we are bringing you in to demonstrate everything that went into creating the game assets the graphical assets for precision. Actually, we know that's not true, because if we were including everything, there would be a whole lot of back and forth and complaining and getting Logan frustrated and getting (laughs) you frustrated, and then me getting frustrated because you guys are frustrated because I'm not allowed to make everything pink. Yeah, that's true. I forgot. Zach did have a thing about wanting the cells to be pink. He felt that the tissue background should, well, obviously be pink because aliens have red blood like we do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway. So now we're taking the whole Vulcan approach and everything's green-blooded. Exactly. So here here we are with looking at the final graphics that Zach creates for the Precision game. Now, in the upper right-hand corner, we're looking at a grayscale cell. Mm-hmm. It's grayscale for the simple fact that we need to be able to control its color in code instead of X and A as we are shifting from our green to our purple color as the cell is dying. By having a grayscale, of course, that means we can just multiply it through and it'll be nice and simple. Underneath that, we've got the antibody. This is drawn by hand by Zach, and he's going to demonstrate with the use of a Wacom tablet doing this. Underneath that, we have our Nanite probe. A little more mechanical, so it needs to be a bit more precise. So sure. We're bringing in some of the tools of Photoshop to help us pull that off. For the game precision, it, it needs to be. Exactly. Never mind. I thought it was funny. And then under that, we've got our stopwatch that Zach's going to show you how to put together. Once again, kind of a, a hardware piece that yeah. needs to be constructed with a bit of precision. There, there you, you go. go. There you go. And then over on the left-hand side, we're going to talk about finding graphics on the Internet and adjusting them to meet your needs. Of course, graphics that are only allowed to be freely used. No one's copyrighted images should be used from the Internet without permission from the author first. Correct. So this is what we're going to be taking a look at over the next few videos. As far as the splash screen goes, hey, we're going to leave the splash screen up to you guys. Everybody? gets the opportunity to come up with their own. But we do want to show you how these graphical assets are put together. So, Zach, with that, let's go ahead and jump into the next video where we are going to demonstrate how to put together that grayscale cell.